the gold stars are flying over there. Keep bringing folks and uh, get in on the good, uh, the good prizes that's being offered. Uh, we really have been progressing a lot, and so God's good. In the Word of God today, uh, Matt, you'll put the uh, picture of my sermon up, okay? <laughs> We're going to Jonah, yeah. <laughs> Someone said, how do you know that it was a whale? Because Jesus said it was as as uh, Jonah was in the belly of a whale three days and three nights, so must the Son of God be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. That's how we know it was a whale. I would like to tell you that in the Kanawha River in West Virginia, they have, uh, they have divers have discovered catfish that's big enough to swallow a man. Catfish. So... If you're a fish in the West Virginia and the Canal River, be careful. All right, Jonah chapter one. I'm going to kind of lay out some uh, groundwork for the for for the book of Jonah. And uh, there's four chapters in the book of Jonah, and they all they all mean something. And I'll cover all of it as I can. I'm not making a long series out of this. But uh, I'd like to also let you know if there's anything, uh, questions on your heart that, that you would like to have a, uh, a, a Bible study from here, from the Word of God on a question or a, or a subject you'd like to have, uh, there's cards in this little box up here in the pen there. Uh, take a card, write what you would like to hear, something that's uh, intriguing you that you'd like to hear a Bible lesson on and we'll uh we'll pick it up and as as Tom would permit and cover it in here so uh I'm gonna be looking into into uh your requests too to incorporate some of that into the Bible class. All right, Jonah chapter one running from God. How many of you remember in your own life how you ran from God when he tried to catch you and save you? Oh, they do. People run. Uh, they they go into denial. Uh, they don't want to give up their lifestyle. And it seems like every time you would uh, get comfortable, here would come a Christian with a witness to you and make you uncomfortable again. I just have an announcement to make. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, personal Savior, uh, there's, going, there's going to be no comfort in your heart and no peace until you have him in there. Because God will not let you go. God will not forget about you. You may forget about him, but he will, he will be a constant reminder. So a lot of people run from God. Then after we get saved, you see, uh, salvation is a choice. Everyone has to choose personally. Uh, in order to be saved. And then after you get saved, it's still a personal choice. Remember that God brought the choice down to every person, if you will or if you won't, if you'll follow, if you won't. And so after we become a Christian uh, and uh, God saves us, you still have that choice to make. So that's why last week I taught that you were forging your own path. God is the creator, and he made us in his image. So God wants us to create. So with your choices in your Christian life, you forge and create your own path that you're walking. If you go out into the permissive will of God, off the direct perfect will of God, God will sometimes allow you to go off of that it's his permissive will. He will permit it, but it will bring the consequences of that choice in your life. All right? So now Jonah is a little bit different because he was a prophet of God that deliberately said, I'm not going to serve God, 
and he did opposite deliberately and made that choice uh, to not do what God would have him to do. And uh, I've often said God will let you do what you want, uh, what you want to do. That was not the case with Jonah. God made him do what he called him to do. Now, when God has to make you get off the permissive will of God and go into the, into the direct will of God, when God has to make you, I've just got news for you according to the word of God in the book of Jonah. It's going to be a whole lot rougher if you know to do good. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is what? Sin. And what separates you from the fellowship and the blessings of God if you're saved? Sin. Sin will destroy. Sin never pays. And God always wins. Those that fight God to keep him getting saved, you're going to be a loser one day and you're going to know it. And it'll be too late. That's the, that's the difficulty in the time. But now we have the prophet Jonah that's going to be running from God because God wanted to save a city. All right? In Jonah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amite, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he thought. You cannot hide from the presence of the Lord. You can ignore what he says because it will catch you. It will catch you hard. It will catch you swift, and it will catch you unaware, and there's a great price that you're going to have to pay. So now, it's the word of the Lord came directly to Jonah, telling him, arise. And you know, that's the first step in our Christian life, is to arise, okay? Not to sit, but get up to do something for God. Because remember, uh, in, that, in that perfect will of God, he's got that pathway for your life already directed. There's a time and a place that God found you. And you may have re resisted, you may have run, you may have tried to hide, but you know that God will keep on you until he saves you. And then he's got that path of your life already. Remember. We're not our own. We belong to the Lord. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And he knows everything from eternity past to eternity future. And he, he knows every living soul because he placed them in the womb. He knows every single one of them. So he's an all awesome Almighty God, and he does not forget. He does not change his mind. He has never changed his word because forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Okay? So uh, some would say, well, uh, I've got to thinking about that, about the eternality of the word of God. And if God, God knew that man was going to fall and God knew that who is going to be saved and what needs to be. And I thought, well, why would God make Jonah do what he called him to do? You want to know the answer to that? Why God made him instead of letting him go to his permissive will? Because Jonah was already written before anything ever was. 
In the beginning was the Word. The Word of God is eternal. God had to bring the Word of God exactly the way that he pinned it. And so he had to make Jonah. And he knew Jonah wouldn't cooperate in the flesh. And that's why I'm saying God's got us to do away with our will and come into his will and accept him. And now it's not our way. It's not what we want, but it's God's way because God's got a path for all of our lives, just he had this path for Jonah. And this was already written. So God had to bring into fruition and into reality this book that he's now printed in the Bible because it's eternal. And so Jonah still had that choice. So what did God say? God came to him and said, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. Why? Because Nineveh was wicked. There's a lot of wickedness in our world. There's a lot of cities in our world that's wicked. But God wants cities reached. Now, I've, I've heard uh, that uh, the, pro- the premier uh, place to, to build a church is not Lincoln Park. Hello, souls in Lincoln Park have to be reached as the same as everybody else because you know what? This is the place, Lincoln Park, Michigan, is where God is operating to save the human souls in our city. God wants Lincoln Park saved. Amen? So why should... He said, well, you'd have been better off if you were some of the big elite. No. Yeah, the people, the elite need to be saved too. But let's don't bypass where God places us. Amen? Because culturally, we make our decisions culturally about what's what's wise and what's not. I know some people that's bought property. I wouldn't buy property unless it was this, 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 or that. Hey. There's, when it comes to God's work and the salvation of souls, there, there's no place to be skipped. Ministry is prevalent and directly the will of God to be in Lincoln Park, Michigan, because the seed of the word of God is to go everywhere, to every soul, to every culture to get them into the path of the truth. And so let's take the challenge and uh, try to reach. uh, I'd like to encourage you to try to reach your cities for Christ. You know, God wanted Nineveh reached, that great city. And I don't care if there's fewer souls or 650,000 like there were in Nineveh that was wicked. They needed to be saved. Our city needs to be saved, and it's not going to be if we don't help save it. God's placed us here. This is our responsibility for this city. So I wanted to bring you a few facts. Uh, Number one, that God wants the gospel to go everywhere. He wants every city saved, and he wants the prophets of God. What's the first commandment that God gave him? When you get to Nineveh, it's to do what? It didn't say go find out the, the restaurants or the motels or, or to make yourself comfortable. It said go and cry against it. God wants his people speaking out against sin and wickedness. All right? God still wants that from us. Well, I don't want to be offensive. Well, bless your heart. Sometimes you have to be offensive. The gospel is the most offensive thing there is when you preach the truth and people are not lined up with the truth. They get they get all out of kilter. So, right? Right? You know, you know that because that feeling will never go away. 
It will never go away. And so God wants the city, see, to cry against it. Why? Because their wickedness is come up before me. Now, God's up there and God's looking down and he sees all this wickedness and that wickedness is coming up before God. So God said, I'm going to take this prophet and I want you to go to Nineveh and cry against it. Because, you know, preaching against sin, that, that stopped a long time ago in the pulpits of America. That's why sin is rampant and raging and having a great time. That's why the devil is so pleased. Would you stop preaching against sin? And there's no messages preached on hell and judgment and, and the fear of God. People drift in their own ways, unaware and not caring how they treat God. All right? I actually had a Christian man that I knew that I had a lot of confidence in. And so I was, we, he was, we were talking about uh, things of the ministry. And he came to hear me preach one time right here. And uh, I preached and, and mentioned hell there. And after it was all over, he said, I, I don't need no messages on hell. I said, no, you don't? Have you got loved ones that's headed there? You mean all you want spiritual stuff? You don't want nobody to be warned about that place? You want the world to... I said, you need to be stirred that hell is real. You need to be aware of it, that your loved ones, that your flesh and your blood are going to die in one day in their sin and go to that awful place called hell. And you'll wish you had a whole lot more of, of preaching about the subject of hell. Down in hell, when that, when that rich man called to be comforted down in the depths of hell and he couldn't get out of that place, what did he say? Oh, send somebody to my five brothers because I don't want them to come to this place of torment. We have to reach our loved ones while we have a chance. And what was Abraham's response to that? Abraham said, they have, your brothers that's lost out there, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Oh, but somebody rose from the dead. Yeah. Who's going to be standing around when the dead man walks up in front of you? Not me. Where do you want a new door? Amen? No. They'll not, they will not listen, though one rose from the dead. And here's a crutch of the thing. One did rise from the dead, and they still don't believe and his name is Jesus. And so the wickedness came up. But Jonah obeyed the first part. He rose up. God said, Arise, and he arose. But he rose up to flee unto Tarshish, which is the opposite direction of where Nineveh was. He went down to Joppa. Now, this is intriguing. He went, was headed the wrong direction, and he went down to Joppa. Why didn't the Bible say he went up? He's on the downward road. When you walk into the permissive will of God, you're on a downward road. That downward road is going to capture you somewhere. You know why? Because you belong to God, and God don't want you there. There's a place God wants you, and if God wants to, he can make you. And, and, and if you say he can't, you, know, you can either do what God asks you to do, or you can wish you had. That's the same with unsaved people. They can either get saved 
or one day they're going to wish they had been saved. It'll be too late. So he rose up to flee from the presence of the Lord, and there's no place you can hide for the Lord. He went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarsus. So I like this. So he paid the fare thereof. Hey, you, you're going to pay the fare for every choice you make. And those choices that you're forging your path, there's a price to pay. There's blessings from God if you're in that path. If you're out of that path, what in the world are you going to face? Where in the world are you going to go? What in the world is going to happen to you? How bad will it be? This we saw about Naomi and Elimelech and Malon and Chilion, when they left the people of God, went down into Moab. There was death, there was heartache, there was sorrow, there was all those things because they went into the permissive will of God. All right? Now, before I get deeper into the story, I'd like to just lay out a few things about the, uh, the chapters in the, in, the, in the book of Jonah. There's four short chapters there. Chapter 1 uh, specializes in listening to the Word of God. The Word of God in chapter 1. Jonah, right in the very beginning, chose opposite uh, the, the uh, fighting God path, the uh, walking off from what God wanted him to do in chapter 1. So it's all about the Word of God. In chapter 2, it's the wrath of God, because when you get to chapter 2, he's already swallowed by the whale. He's already gone through some stuff, and you see the wrath of God upon the, the prophet of God, the failed God. And then we see in chapter 3, finally uh, uh, in verse 10 of chapter 2, uh, the, the, fish, uh, the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon dry land. That means that prophet of God made a whale sick. If he made a whale sick, how sick did he make God? You can't fight God and get by with it. And so then we see that he comes to, to the willingness to do what God wants. In chapter 3, we see the will of God because God saved that city. When that prophet began to preach, the people began to tremble. They began to listen. And listen, God can make your those enemies of yours that you're witnessing to, he can make them listen. He can open their heart. And most of the time, God's got that path way for you. And when you find your way to those souls, that God wants you to win. Their hearts have already been prepared. Nobody ever got saved because Ron Dobbs came and stood in front of them. God prepared their heart, and God sent Ron Dobbs to be there in that path at that time. Amen. I remember going, going with Brother Aaron and there were seven people that God had already prepared their heart. You didn't know you could lead seven people to the Lord in 30 minutes, did you, Brother Aaron? But it works. It works. God, we are, listen, I've said this a thousand times. You and I are only instruments of love in the hand of God to lead those souls to righteousness and to the Lord. Let's be those instruments of love, all right? And so you have the will of God. And then chapter 4 is all about uh, the city repented, and they were saved, and now we have a bitter prophet because he was a success in his ministry. He preached God's going to destroy you. And guess what? God did not destroy them. Why? 
because God repented and changed his mind of what he was going to do unto them because they sat in sackcloth and ashes and repented and believed the words of the prophet. And now you have a prophet. I, Lord, I preach there, you're going to fire and brimstone come out. So he goes up on the, uh, the, the, the city, up on the mountain, and there he sat to watch the judgment of God fall on Nineveh. Hey, listen, you leave the results up to God. Preachers need to leave the results up to God. I want to tell you, when you have a service and you preach what God's laid upon your heart and nobody comes to the altar, it's not your job to get them to the altar. It's your job to preach the word of God to them because that seed of the word of God is being scattered and sown. And sometimes it will be slammed down into the hearts of those that listen, and the preacher will never know it. It's not about the personality that's standing there. It, it wasn't about Jonah's personality, uh, how powerful his preaching was. It's about he took God's word and preached it out, and God uh, propagated the salvation of a whole city because a preacher finally got where God could use him. God could never use Jonah if he had never gone to Nineveh. So he had the wisdom of God of saving. The wisdom of God. I want us to turn just a page or two in your Bible. Back to the book of Amos, chapter 8. And while you're turning there, chapter 1 that does uh, uh, of Jonah, uh, this statement I've got down here is a, there is a ministry for all. It's not only Jonah that had a ministry and a call from God, but every one of us has a call from God and we all have a ministry. God didn't save you not to give you a ministry. Every Christian is under the sound and, and the authority of the Great Commission, which is God said, ye, ye shall receive power, and, uh, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the outermost parts of the earth. Every person has a ministry connected to the word of God. And, and secondly, there's a method for all. You know, God's got the method already down. He's got the word already sanctioned. All we have to do is give it out. And then there's a message for all. The message is what I preached on last Sunday night. Except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Except the man be born again. Now, if you missed last Wednesday night, you missed four, uh, four of God's exceptions. Except you repent, you're going to likewise perish. Okay? And except the man, now that's God's exceptions. But God's got a ministry for every single person. And then, uh, as you look at the book of Jonah, notice that there is a motive for all. So you got the ministry and the message and the, the method and the motive. And that's all these four chapters is what that's all about. Now, I will get into this for just a moment before we go back over to, uh, to the book of Amos. All through here, you have God's intervention and God's arresting of the things that he prepared. As you scatter through all four of these chapters, you'll find, but when he got on board, the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. You see, God rocked the waves. When a Christian walks off, God will rock the waves. 
All right? It goes on. Those mariners were afraid, and, and, the, and the shipmaster come, and they was all praying to their different gods, and here was Jonah sound asleep, resting. You know, he thought like a lot of Christians do today. Oh, God will just let me do this. No big deal with God if I disobey. Oh, God will send somebody else to Nineveh if I don't go wrong. Why? It was already written, Buster, you're going to Nineveh. And what are you going to do about it? And so they, they, they didn't know what to do. And verse 7, they cast lots and... And the lot fell upon Jonah. Uh, then, you know, the short stick came upon Jonah. Oh, let's draw. Let's see who's, who, whose fault it is. And they all, God let the, the, the gambling session fall on Jonah. It fell on him. And then they questioned him about it. And he, he said in verse 9, he said to them, I, I'm a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. So he knew all about creation, and he still had a fear of God, but he still chose wrong. And now he's in a pickle. Well, what are we going to do? He said, throw me overboard, and everything will be fine. So they picked him up and threw him overboard. And you'll see... So Jonah, so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Now look at this. And I told you how God takes a bad situation and makes a good situation. Jonah's in a lot of trouble right now because now he's floundering in the sea. That whale hadn't got him yet. I don't know how long it took the whale to find it, but he's floundering now in the, in the sea. In verse 16, the, and the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. And now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Not a very pleasant place to be. Chapter 2 talks about the wrath of God. And we'll get there maybe maybe next week as I'll finish probably this up. Go back, if you would please, a couple pages in your Bible to the book of Amos, which is just prior to that. And let's go to chapter 9. Chapter 9. God's bringing down the hammer on Israel, the desolation of Israel. And in verse 11, the word of God said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor thirst for water, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. And you know, we're suffering, uh, we're suffering the famine right now. You can still hear the words of the Lord now, but there's going to come a time and I believe very soon where preachers will be put in jail for preaching the truth. They don't even want you to socially use the words man or woman or boy or girl. This woke society, this blasphemous thing that they do against God, everything in the world they can do against God, they do it. And I want to tell you, now, the sin of America and the sin of the world is still up in the nostrils of God, and he's looking down every single day. Oh, how we need him to come. We need the Lord to come. Amen? And I believe he's coming very soon. The Bible said in verse 12, They shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro and seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. And it's hard to get people to come now to hear the words of the Lord. But I've got an announcement to make. There's going to come a time when they're going to, they're, they're going to yearn, uh, yearn with all their heart to hear 
preaching and teaching of the words of God, and they will not find it. They won't find it. It's hard to find it now with all of the Jonas that's running in their pulpits away from the messages of God. In that day shall the fair virgins and the young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria, that say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth, even they shall fall and never rise up again. Now, I want you to know this. There's no place you can hide from God. Next chapter, chapter 9. I saw the Lord standing upon an altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the posts may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them. I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. In other words, God said, I'm going to get you, and you're not going to escape. Though they dig into hell, thence shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight, in the bottom of the sea, thus will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thus will I command the sword, and it shall slay them, and I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. And the Lord God of hosts is he that toucheth the land, and it shall melt, and all that dwell thereon shall mourn, and it shall rise up holy like a flood, and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heavens, and hath founded the troop in the earth. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and pour them out upon the face of the earth. Get that, all this, the Lord is his name. There is no place to hide because the Lord is his name. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for those that come to hear today. Bless our morning service, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.